All right, good afternoon, everybody. Prior to the start of our city council meeting um, this evening, we've got a um, proclamation and uh, it's about uh, kidney disease. And Colleen, I'm gonna ask you to step up and maybe say a couple things and then we'll read the proclamation. All right. Uh, my name is Colleen York Fredrickson. I am the Community Outreach Manager for the National Kidney Foundation serving Iowa and Nebraska. I'm also a very proud resident of Des Moines, and I'm thrilled to be here today. Uh, we are trying to shed light on the one in three who are at risk for kidney disease, as well as the one in seven U.S. adults who are currently living with kidney disease, and only approximately 10% are aware. So we ask that you take a minute out of your day, go to minuteforyourkidneys.org, Take a short quiz, and if you are at risk for kidney disease, we ask that you discuss that with your with your practitioner. Thanks so much. All right, Colleen, thank, thank you. And uh, quickly, let me read the proclamation. As Colleen said, uh, whereas one in three Des Moines residents are at risk for kidney disease and one in seven residents have kidney disease with only 10% of those even knowing it, and whereas it is critical that the attention be brought to this often overlooked but increasingly common disease with major risk factors including diabetes, high blood pressure, a family history of kidney failure, and being over 60 years of age. And whereas early detection and treatment of kidney disease could result in fewer Des Moines residents requiring dialysis treatments or transplant, transplants. And whereas the National Kidney Disease Foundation serving Iowa rep represents Des Moines patients, transplant patients, or recipients, people affected by kidney disease and their family members. And whereas the month of March is National Kidney Month and March 1st, 2022 is National World Kidney Day. Now therefore, I, the mayor of the city of Des Moines, on behalf of our city council and the residents of Des Moines do hereby proclaim the month of March 2022 is Kidney Disease Awareness Month, and I call upon all of our residents of Des Moines to take care of their kidneys and get tested if you have and are at risk. So thank you so much, and we'll, thank you. we'll do a quick photo. All right. All right. Thanks so much. Put this order. Me and my wife, we moved here last year from the Chicagoland area, and we volunteered for the kids. All right, prior to the start of our city council meeting uh, this evening, we're going to have a Municipal Housing Agency Governing Board meeting. And um, let's call that to order. And I will um, ask the clerk to please take roll. County? Here. Bozen? Here. Foss? Here. Shoemaker? Westergaard? Here. Mandelbaum? Here. Gatto? Here. Your Honor, we have a quorum. All right, item two is approving the agenda as presented and or as amendment. Could we amend it? Could we uh, have a motion? I'll move approval of the agenda. Second. Been moved and seconded. Any discussion? Okay. Note that uh, Council Member Shoemaker is present. Uh, all in favor say aye. 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 Any opposition? All right, item passes. Item three is setting the date of hearing on items regarding the budget for March 21st of 22. A is on the amendment to the annual budget for the current fiscal year ending June 30 of 2022, and B on the proposed budget for the fiscal year ending of 20 or June 30 of 2023. Any thoughts? If not, if I'll not, move approval for item three. Second. All right, item three, A and B. All right, I think we should um, go ahead and pull the uh, commission or the board. Oh, okay. county. Well, we'll go ahead and just okay. vote. We Thank got you. it. It's up. Linda. Your Honor, that's seven yes. Motion carries. All right. Could we have a motion to adjourn?
Second. It's been moved and seconded. All in favor say aye. 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 All right. We sit adjourned and we will start our city council meeting in just a few minutes. Five o'clock. Yeah, I know. Bug me for a second. Um, I'm no longer pulling 53. So we can just cross that off. Okay. Yeah, the last one. Thank you. Done, done, done. Okay, let's see. So we're done with
So Josh would need to speak on that one then, Mayor. Yeah. Yeah. Or, or it off. We've, he's got 26. We've pulled it off. It's a sister city thing. Okay. Yeah. Well, but that's unless you have some comments about nominations to that. Okay. All right. Good afternoon or good evening, everybody. Um, I've got a couple of quick things to uh, um, read. Obviously, we'll go over our rules. By the way, uh, we have taken away the requirement for uh, masks. However, um, it appears as though we have seen another surge in um, the pandemic. So let's all be careful. We're recommending that people do the right thing, but uh, uh, in terms of a mandatory uh, masking here, we're not requiring that uh, at this time. But uh, the public is hereby notified the City Council will not tolerate uh, disruptions of our business meetings and persons wishing to attend this meeting are reminded of the following. We welcome germane comments uh, from the public uh, at the appropriate time, but this is a Council uh, business meeting and the Council needs to conduct the people's business and the Council has rules that are validly adopted under Iowa law and those rules will be followed. Uh, anyone engaging in disruptive conduct in the council chambers of the Great Hall will result in those being disruptive, being ordered to leave the building and being denied readmittance for the remainder of the day. Uh, no person will be permitted to stand uh, in the council chambers um, during council sessions between the audience seats or on them and the council members uh, accept the persons addressing the council at the speaker's microphone and only after being recognized. Uh, all persons desiring to address the council may do so only when recognized, but the council reserves the right to limit the speaker's time and the order in which the speakers address the council. Uh, under section 2-70 of the city code, it is illegal to interrupt any person who is addressing the council except by a council member and is illegal to disrupt the council meeting. Uh, everyone in attendance has their First Amendment uh, rights and any disruptive conduct by one person or group impinges on those rights of others that are present. So disruptive conduct, again, will not be tolerated. All right, with that, I do have a couple of um, things that um, I would like to comment on. One, uh, some of you may be aware that there was a shooting this afternoon at East High School. And um, I just want to say um, to everyone that's watching this virtually or um, those of you in the audience that our thoughts and concerns certainly go out to the victims and, and their families. And we hope and pray for the best outcomes. But uh, um, we are really concerned and hoping uh, for the best but a uh, very tragic situation. Uh, also, we have a relationship with Staverpool. We have reached out to Staverpool, um, and I have to our sister city commission. The commissioners have reached out to Staverpool uh, and want to know what their stance is on the invasion. We know that a number of cities over there and their citizens have been very uh, upset about the invasion, the unprovoked invasion of the Ukraine. Uh, we have not heard back from Stavropol, um, and so I'm going to recommend uh, to our council that we suspend our relationship with Stavropol immediately and make that recommendation to our sister city commission uh, for um, essentially the unprovoked Russian invasion of the Ukraine. Obviously, our relationship through the years has been with the citizens in the city of Stavropol, but um, until we can get a resolve as to where they stand on it, um, and obviously no one's going in or out of um, the uh, Russian borders at this time, and we um, do not see uh, how we can um, have a relationship as we have in the exchange of of culture and education uh, for citizens at this time. So I would make that recommendation if somebody would uh, want to 
make a motion on Second. Mr. I'll Baker. move it. Uh, it's it's been moved that we make that recommendation. Second it. It's been second. Uh, I, well, we're making a recommendation as those of us here to to that. Not it's as a council, just as individual members. Expressed. Well, as a collective membership. Are you good with that, Mr. Consensus? Um, yeah, this is a consensus. Council action should take place during the, the actual meeting. That's all right. So let's uh, withdraw that for the moment. And All right. We'll do it as the first item. Uh, let's call our uh, council meeting to order. And um, I will ask um, the clerk to please take roll. County? Here. Bozen? Here. Boss? Here. Shoemaker? Here. Westergaard? Here. Mandelbaum? Here. Gattle? Here. Your Honor, that's we have a quorum. All right. I quickly are we good now? We could do this. Yeah. Is in the membership if they agree to go ahead, which sounds like. All right. Um, would uh, someone want to make a um, a motion to uh, recommend that we immediately uh, recommend to our sister city commission that they suspend the relationship with Stavropol uh, after the unprovoked uh, Russian invasion of the Ukraine? Yep, I'll make that motion, Your Honor. I, I can second it. And we've got a second. Um, let's go ahead and all in favor say aye. 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 Any opposition? Hearing none, the item passes and we will send that on um, to our sister city commission. Item two is approving the general uh, agenda as presented and or as amended. I will tell you, um, we do have item 23 is corrected, uh, 15 tax abatement applications, uh, 35A was added. It was setting a data hearing on a request from Shive Hattery for a certificate of appropriateness uh, for the proposed renovation of the Waveland Trolley Loop at 49th and University, located at 4900 block of the University Avenue and that would be setting that date for 321. Uh, sponsor is uh, Councilmember Voss. The uh, item 46 is corrected. Urban Renewal Development Agreement with NMDP Holdings, LLC. Adam Peterson is the president for the expansion of an industrial precast production plant at 3312 East Granger Avenue. And uh, under the regular agenda items, 55 to 65, uh, 58B was added, a request to waive the readings, um, and that was received by the manager. Item 64 and 64A were withdrawn by the Neighborhood Service Department. Unless anybody has anything else, those are the... Um, I'll move it, Your Honor. Okay. Second. Uh, okay. Been moved and seconded to approve the... Uh, Agenda as presented and or as amended. Uh, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Item pass. Item three is pro uh, approving the uh, consent agenda tonight. Those are items three through 54. Um, item five, uh, I vote no. Item 26, uh, Councilmember Mandelbaum wish to speak. I don't need to speak on that. Okay. Acted on the right. full relationship already. All right. Item 47, uh, Councilmember Mandelbaum wishes to speak. Item 49, Councilmember Westergaard votes no. And item 52, Councilmember Shoemaker wishes to speak. So those are the. I'll move it, Your Honor. I'll second it. It's been moved and seconded. Um, Your Honor, that's seven yes. Motion carries. All right. That's going to take us straight to the hearing items. This evening, um, 
the hearings are items uh, 55 through 62. And before the hearings uh, um, this evening, we have three zoning items. Items 58, 60, and 61. We also have one vacation hearing, uh, and one vacation correction hearing, and a hearing to reject all bids for which there will be no public comment and a conveyance uh, hearing and a public improvement commencement hearing. As a reminder, uh, the zoning items only, which are 58, 60, and 61, we will hear from the parties in interest first and then uh, from the general public. The parties in interest for the zoning include only the applicant and those within 250 feet of the property uh, to be rezoned to whom the city has sent notices. After all those parties in interest have commented, we will open it up uh, to any member of the public for germane comments to add or to aid in recognizing the parties in interest to zoning items, I will ask everyone else not to step to the microphone unless they are uh, the zoning applicant or again they live within that 250 feet and receive that notice. Anyone who approaches the mic before it is their time will be compared to that list. And if not on the list, will be considered disruptive and will not be recognized for the, main or the meeting and will be required to leave the building. So please wait until I call on the general public for the zoning items. Um, or you won't be uh, called on the remainder of the evening or uh, and also be required to leave. All the parties in interest will have uh, and have been called upon the general public uh, comment uh, not to exceed one minute per person to a maximum of seven minutes will be called upon for the germane comment unless the hearing is ended sooner for failure to make uh, germane comments or public comments have ended. Uh, for all their hearings this evening, any person uh, may make germane comments and not to exceed that one minute to a maximum of five minutes per hearing unless the hearing is ended sooner uh, again for failure to make germane comments or when the comments cease. Uh, for the items rejecting all bids, uh, no public comment will be heard uh, on those items. All right. Um, let's get started with our hearings. Let's note that it is 509. First item is item 55 is to correct the vacation of portions of Southeast 4th Street right away located between vacated East Elm Street and East Martin Luther King Jr. Parkway for the market re district redevelopment project. A is the first consideration of the ordinance above. And uh, we'll open it up now for any germane comments from the general public uh, who would like to speak about this vacation. Seeing none, could we have a motion? Seeing none, I will move item 55 and 55A and pursuant to rule 42A, I'll move to waive the second and third reading. Second. Yes. All right, it's been moved and seconded. I'll ask everyone to please vote. Your Honor, that's six yes, motion, or I mean, excuse me, seven yes, motion carries. All right, item 56. These are items regarding the WRA Birdland Pump Station Replacement Project. Council Communication Number 22-101. A is continued hearing uh, for vacation of a portion of the Birdland Park and a conveyance to the Des Moines Metropolitan Wastewater Reclamation Authority, the WRA. For the WRA Birdland Pump Station Replacement Project, can, which was continued from February 21st of 2022 Council Meeting. B is the first consideration of the ordinance above. C is the final consideration of the ordinance above the waivers requested by James Beck, the PE of the Wastewater Engineering Manager, and requires six votes. D is a resolution dedicating a portion of the Sailor Road right of way adjoining Birdland. Park north of East Jefferson Avenue, and E is approving an agreement with the Des Moines Metropolitan Wastewater Reclamation Authority for the Birdland Pump Station replacement, including granting temporary rights of entries for access and construction. Again, we'll open it up for any germane uh, comments from the general public, uh, one minute um, per person and five minutes. Anybody want to speak regarding the wastewater um, Reclamation Authority's Birdland Pump Station Replacement Project. 
step forward if you need to. Yep, you're on. Uh, Taylor Weber, Ward 3. Um, so I, I think this, in general, project seems fine. One thing that's kind of in the details of the project that uh, I didn't really see outlined is there's apparently something where there's a portion of the land for this project that is not documented and who officially owns it. So there's the potential, or essentially it says in there, that we will be using eminent domain in the future. Uh, to rectify the legality of who owns what portion uh, as it relates to this. Just concerning, again, eminent domain is not great. Uh, like with Four Mile Creek that happened in the fall, there, there's been lots of instances where this council uh, uses that that doesn't necessarily benefit the city. So I'd like to see us just you know have a plan for what actually are we doing opposed to just in the language saying we'll be doing this in the future. Uh, say specifically like what is needs rectified like really clearly lay out what uh, the plan is uh, Just because I've seen the city use eminent domain in the past See no other comments mr. Mayor I would move items 56 a B C D and E I'll second it All right been moved and seconded Your Honor, that's seven yes. Motion carries. Item 57 is on conveyance of excess city-owned property located in the Four Mile Creek floodplain to Polk County for the use and benefit of the Polk County Conservation Board for the lower Four Mile Creek Greenway project. Again, we'll open it up for general germane comments uh, uh, from our general public. Again, one minute per speaker uh, for those who would want to speak regarding the conveyance of our city-owned property for the Four Mile Creek floodplain to Polk County. Seeing none. I would like to move item 57. I had some questions about this. Just looking at the map, um, it was a bunch of like scattered properties and so I was just kind of curious like what the reasoning was for that. Just like a quick answer for that. Uh, if I could, Mayor. Uh, Go ahead, Mr. Manager. Yes, Scott Sanders, City Manager. It is likely because they, we've already conveyed quite a bit of the property and so as the city's able to attain a uh, new property within those uh, Far Mile Creek phases, we would then as a group convey it to the conservation Okay, so it's like in stages, essentially? Yes. Okay, thank you. I'll second it. All right, been moved and seconded. Ask everyone to vote. Your Honor, seven yes, motion carries. Item 58 is on a request from 205 Land Investments, LLC, to rezone property located at 1106 Army Post Road from RX1 Mixed Use District to MX1 Mixed Use District to address the subject property's current legal non-conforming use status as a restaurant use with alcohol sales located within 75 feet of the required separation distance from a parcel contain, containing a place of worship use. A is the first consideration of the ordinance above. B is the final consideration of the ordinance above. The waiver is requested by Anthony Selsey, manager. It requires six votes. Uh, first, uh, parties in interest. Is there party in interest? Thank you, Council. Thank you, Council. Will Reasoner with the Dickinson Law Firm for 205 Land Investments, LLC. Uh, we're seeking this uh, zoning change to address an issue uh, with the sale of alcohol at this restaurant. Uh, this restaurant has been, uh, it's changed hands in terms of the, the operator, but the restaurant itself has been uh, open for decades. Um, it's been able to sell uh, wine and spirits along with uh, 
sales of food. This is not a bar, it's a restaurant that serves uh, alcohol. There happens to be a church next door, um, and because that's not 75 feet away, there is a restriction on the ability to serve alcohol uh, with the food. Uh, there is a non-conforming status at this time, but because of issues with tenants coming in and out, we want to address uh, being able to hang on to that uh, ability to serve alcohol. Uh, again, not as a bar, but in the restaurant context. And so we're seeking this change. The zoning change actually goes from RX1 to MX1. So it's going from more intensive to less intensive. Uh, city staff found that this was in conformance with the uh, overall plan for the city. They recommended approval. The Planning and Zoning Commission approved unanimously, and we ask that you do the same. Thank you. Anybody have anything? Thank you. Any other parties in interest? Those that received notice lived nearby within that 250 feet or adjacent properties. Seeing none, uh, any general public comments regarding this? Seeing none. Seeing none, Mr. Mayor, I'll move item 58, 58A, and 58B. Second. All right, it's been moved and seconded. You wait a second there. Your Honor, that's seven yes. Motion carries. Yeah. All right. Next item is item 59. It's on the intent to commence a public improvement project to construct Watrous Avenue some, from Southwest 56th Street to Southwest 61st Street project and to authorize acquisition of the necessary property interest. Council communication number 22-088. Uh, again, we'll open it up to uh, germane comments from the general public and uh, allowing each one um, a minute to speak. Anyone want to make a comment on this? Again, regarding constructing Watrous Avenue. Is that a hand up? Sure. <coughs> Taylor Weber, Ward 3. Uh, so in the language, what does it say? To authorize the acquisition. So you might know what I'm going to mention. Uh, in the language, again, there's several references to eminent domain and the potential need to use it here. Uh, luckily, it's only six homeowners as this work's being done. But again, I'd just like to point out the, the city's uh, lack of working in the best interest of uh, the residents and homeowners uh, as it relates to eminent domain various projects over the last year. Uh, I just think it would be great to see what, where the city gets the guidance from opposed to, uh, you know, just seeing the word eminent domain that you're going to potentially take people's property uh, if they don't want to give it up in, in these situations. So relatively small project here, but I think it's important uh, just like anything where you're potentially using eminent domain. Seeing nothing further, I'll move item 59. I'll second it. 59 has been moved and seconded. Your Honor, that's seven yes. Motion carries. Item 60. It's on a request from ABC Partners LP for the approval of a proposed second amendment to the airport business park phase two uh, PUD conceptual plan on property located at 7404 Southwest 37th Street in order to reconfigure lots within the PUD and reduce the requirement of a 10-foot bicycle path along Southwest 37th Street and Gannett Avenue to a 5-foot sidewalk and to add the fabrication and production intensive use uh, of fertilizer product assembly to uh, allowed uses within the property. Uh, this item was continued from the February uh, 21st, 2022 council meeting. Um, we will uh, ask if there's any parties in interest. Um, I think this one's on. Do you guys have any questions that we got some I, I, think we're, I think we're good if we have some. 
Mayor, members of the council, Eric Cannon, 2727 Southwest Snyder Boulevard. Uh, here on behalf of Snyder Associates as a consulting engineer on the project. I'm also representing um, the potential developer here for the site. Um, he will be speaking here shortly with some more detailed information pertaining to the proposed development. Um, before you tonight is a project consisting of a 51,000 square foot building. Um, uh, the mixture of office, assembly facility, and warehousing space. This is located just off Army Post and Southwest 37th Street. Um, this is a vacant parcel that's sat here for approximately uh, 20 years. They're looking to propose the development here. Um, we have been working with staff since last fall diligently to work through the approvals. We understand the PUD does limit some of the uses here, and we want to be very prescriptive to the use that is proposed. Um, we do understand um, there are concerns with the council. Um, this is why this item was continued from the last meeting. There were some last minute questions that were raised. There have been a lot of discussions um, over the last couple weeks, hopefully to answer a lot of those questions and concerns that have been raised um, by the council here. Um, we have been working through this process for several months, as I've noted. Um, staff has been in full support of the project to date. Um, we have not had any concerns or questions raised by them. We have been through um, the approvals with the fire department. They have reviewed the project. They have re reviewed all the components with the project. They are in support of the project. Um, we have also had communications with the WRA. They are in support of the project. Um, we have been through the Planning and Zoning Commission. There was no questions or concerns raised at the Planning and Zoning Commission and received a unanimous support there. We also did have a neighborhood meeting um, in conformance with the requirements from a zoning standpoint. There was no concerns, questions, or residents that attended the neighborhood meeting as well. So I just want to be very clear that we have done everything that has been asked to date. Um, we hopefully have answered all the questions and, and concerns that have been raised um, and would in, in, uh, appreciate your guys' support on this. And at this point, I will defer to um, the applicant. Hello. Thank you, Eric. Uh, good afternoon to all members of the council. Everyone's here today. Uh, my name is Renato Fermento. Um, our address is 3219-99 Street in Urbandale. I'm a resident of the city of Des Moines on Pioneer Road. Uh, I'm the operations manager for SprayTech Fertilizers. Uh, as a, as a SprayTech employee and a city of Des Moines resident for the last decade, I'm very excited about this project. Uh, it is great to bring things from South America, the place where I come from, to the place that I now call home and want to continue building my family in. Many American companies make their way down to Brazil and Argentina due to tremendous agricultural potential, while not a lot of South American companies go the other way around. SprayTech project began 25 years ago in Argentina. We have been in the U.S. since 2014. Thankfully, with the support of the American farmer, we have been in a growth process that now requires us to make even bigger moves here. Our founder and CEO wants our Des Moines location to be our global headquarters and our business card to all of our countries of operation. I'd like to share some more a little bit about our organization. SprayTech manufactures and markets, markets fully fertilizer products specially formulated to avoid losses during the application, provide nutrition, plant health, and aid in the disease, for, disease control for crops. SprayTech is a global company that operates in eight different countries. In the U.S., we're currently distributing our products in 12 different states. Our mission is to promote positive development of agriculture through trans transparency, innovation, and integrity, and our vision is to be a valuable resource for producers, a leader in technology, and a top manufacturer of high-quality products. As we all know, agriculture is a huge part of the state of Iowa, but we're also aware that there are some products that can cause concerns. SprayTech products are 100% or are all 100% biodegradable, free of heavy metals, non-hazardous, and non-flammable. Comparing to our competition, we are using five to ten times lower rates in our products. That means less storage space, less transportation, and smaller amount of products being actually applied into the crops. In addition, we are helping to reduce issues with pesticides such as the contamination of underground water, drift and volatility issues, and other environmental problems. We pride ourselves in sustainability and bringing a disruptive technology to the conventional agricultural approach. The manufacturing or assembly process consists on mixing raw materials, blending them together and packaging them into our one gallon containers. And it's a very clean process. There are no emissions, odor issues, or anything that would be harmful to the neighborhood. This project will not only help bring jobs to local residents, but also attracting international visitors to Des Moines. In a typical year, <coughs> we host hundreds of people from different countries at our U.S. offices. Events such as Farm Progress Show, Iowa Ag Expo, and other across the Midwest happen every year, and we would love our new building to be a stop at the international visitors' tours. 
Our location at the airport is a great fit in terms of lot size, location, and accessibility for our visitors. City of Des Moines Fire Department has reviewed all of our product STS sheets, and from their initial review, we would not be classified as a hazardous, hazardous occupancy. I would also like to make clear that we do not use ammonium nitrate, nitric acid, ammonium sulfate, or other flammable products that recently made the news about issues with fertilizer plants. It's very important to ensure the safety of our neighbors, employees, and community, as we have done over the last 25 years over the world. We were approached by different cities in Iowa and other U.S. states as well about this product, project, but Des Moines is where we want to be, as the metro area has wel welcomed us since our first day here. To the city of Des Moines residents, council members, and everyone here today, we would love to add another chapter to our history with this project. We're available for any questions, concerns, today or any point of time, and we look forward to continue helping U.S. farmers to be more sustainable, efficient, and productive. Thanks for your time. Anybody have any questions? Or concerns? All right. Are there um, any folks uh, who live within that 250 feet who would like to make comment that have received notice? Seeing none, Council, um, any questions or thoughts? Uh, I'm sorry. Yeah. 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 All right. Does anybody else have any uh, uh, general comments? Step forward. Looks like we have two, for sure. Three. All right. Thank you. Uh, my name is Natalie Harwood. I'm in Ward One. Um, I want to address a couple things. First of all, there's no definition for biodegradable or non-hazardous that is like standardized or scientific. So they can say that their products are not those things, but that's just like demonstrably false. Like fertilizers are dangerous chemicals. They, are, they can end up leaching into the places that are surrounding it. I don't think there's any reason for us to be giving an exemptions for intensive fertilizer use, especially considering like the environmental impact of something like that. And they can say it's biodegradable, but there's no like true scientific definition for that. And they, they can make whatever claims they want, but that isn't something that is like defined. And you can say like that's for sure a thing or not a thing. Um, I don't think we should be making any exceptions for fertilizers. I think we should be focusing on native grasses. I don't think it's good for our communities or the environment. I don't think that we should also be waiving anything related to bicycle paths, especially because that is kind of an area of sprawl and there are some like employers around the area. So it would be really nice if we could get the ability for more people to get out there using things besides their cars. Um, and also... <coughs> Hi, Carol Maher, Ward 3, zip code 50312. Um, um, just FYI, it was approved on the consent agenda for PNZ, so that's why there were no questions. Um, and as the previous speaker um, spoke, you can expect me to say that not good uh, just in looks to waive bicycle paths with all the concrete that's being poured there. I would think that to go from 5 to 10 feet on a bike path would be well, a good use of, of concrete, and it just looks bad and is short-sighted to disincentivize um, bicycle use. Um, also, um, you know, fertilizer is coming downstream from farmers it what is what makes our water undrinkable and, and just doesn't really sit right as an urbanite in this urban-rural battle. And I would have a question on if there are any public dollars going to this project, TIF, tax abatement, other... Um, if that you would consider um, why we would be using that in this instance. Uh, 50309, Ward 3. Um, yeah, I want to point out that um, we were told that they've done everything that's been asked of them, but what's, this item is about them not following requirements, so they have not done everything that's been asked of them. Uh, blatantly, that's what the item is. Um, more importantly, I don't like these exemptions. It's, it's also weird that it's not just one, but it's two. They're asking for multiple things. Also, I'm not sure what they're talking about with there being no odor because we were told by the city planning administrator that uh, we need to take steps to, with this plan, uh, the recommendations to take steps against those odors. Um, so either the city, city planning administrator is off or something else is off here. Uh, also needed to point out that um, Richard Elise, I don't know how to say his name, sorry, owner of ABC Partners LP that's looking for these exemptions uh, donated $1,000 to Frank County's campaign before. Um, so I have concerns that this exemption might not be given 
really fair fair chance by the city and fair comparison to other people looking for exemptions. That's interesting. Uh, Taylor Weber Ward 3. Uh, yeah, echo, echo a lot of the thoughts that are here. And also I'd, I'd like to uh, thank the company for thinking about Des Moines as a, as a location to come. Uh, I would echo the safety concerns. Um, I guess a couple things I'll point out quick is there's no language in here that says they can't use the chemicals they said are dangerous. I believe them that they say the, the things that have caused uh, issues in other communities like large explosions, uh, it would be of concern if they were used, but there's no language in the rezoning uh, that says they couldn't or someone else couldn't come in and do that uh, after allowing the, the production of fertilizer. Uh, also big concern is with being fertilizer and everything in the news, the 250 feet for uh, affected parties seems insanely small. Uh, if there was an explosion at a fertilizer factory, I would think it would go farther than 250 feet outside the property lines. So I think that'd be cool to think about how we're actually contacting residents. Uh, and then on the bike path, I'd echo that. I think you're going to say it's a bike path to nowhere, but still relevant. Bridget Peterson, Ward 2, she, hers. Uh, I was at a friend's apartment in the metro recently and I made the mistake of pouring a glass of water for myself from the tap. It was cloudy. Uh, he hasn't been drinking his water for weeks. Um, and I want to echo what someone said earlier about uh, fertilizer chemicals leaching into our groundwater. I don't want more of that in my groundwater and I don't care that they're using chemicals that are good versus bad or whatever. The point is those chemicals aren't a part of that ecosystem. They don't belong there. So I don't know why we're manufacturing them there. Yes. Council? It, it looks like we're... Doesn't it get a rebuttal? Let's see what? Doesn't it get a rebuttal? Doesn't the yeah, if they can, but there may be some questions from council also. I don't I don't have questions. If they want to speak more, that's fine. I don't object. I just wanted to provide some clarification on the, the bike path comment. Um, there is a bike path along Army Post that will be extended as part of this project that currently is not there. So we'll be filling in that gap and completing that network. The, the current amendment that has been requested here is the original PUD had a 10-foot bike path looping within the development. The initial phase of that um, with the Iowa Public Employees Credit Union only put in a five-foot sidewalk. Um, we will be more or less completing or continuing that loop, so we're just modifying that down to a five-foot sidewalk as well. So there will still be a five-foot sidewalk interior to the site adjacent to the property that will be installed and the 10 foot bike trail along army post will be completed as part of the project as well. So thus providing that connectivity to the community. Um, in regards to some of the concerns, again, this is um, non-flammable, um, non-hazardous. Non You're gonna see more concerns from a, a gas station when it comes to explosions and things like that. So um, again, I know those consist all over the community. So again, I know we can stand up here as professionals and, and extend our documentation, the paperwork from, from all kinds of folks. Um, I don't anticipate that to make everyone believe that information, but again, um, I, I can't argue with scientific data either. So um, there are annual fire inspections that would be required as part of this site. Um, the fire department's gonna have full access to it. Um, the site is completely contained. Floor drains are eliminated. If there is any kind of spill of any nature at all, um, it's all contained within the facility. So. Again, this is much more like a clean room or a laboratory when it comes to mixing chemicals. No raw chemicals are manufactured here. Um, they are brought in, no different than chemicals being brought into Home Depot or Walmart or Target and stored on their shelves. They are just mixed here, repackaged, and then sent back out. Um, so I just wanted to be very clear um, what the use is that's going in here relative to the concerns that have been raised. Um, this is a very different operation. This is not a manufacturing. This is taking materials that are safe and clean, mixing them together, putting them in a new bottle, packaging them in a pallet, and then sending them out to farmers and different end users.
throughout Iowa and throughout the world. Um, so again, I think it's a great use for this site. It's been sitting here for over 20 years. Um, there are very limited properties like this within Des Moines that provide the access that this property does um, within the proximity of the, of the nature that it does. So again, happy to answer any questions you guys have. Could, could I ask a question of him? You've got a question. Yes. For, this is different. The zoning, it's a planned unit development. So what does, what's the description on the planned unit development? Because that's much different than if I just, by rights, could build something here but with zoning, then it can change. But if, I'm, if I understand correctly, with the PUD, that can never change. Yes. So even if they leave, it would have to go back through plan and zoning, back through the city council. So what does, what does the PUD, what's that description? So um, thank you for the question. Um, we have, again, we've been working with staff for months on this. There was a lot of questions if we even need to do a PUD amendment here. But giving it's a PUD, it's very prescriptive to the use. And it can't change. It's very limiting. It runs with the land. It cannot change. Yeah. So if any other user comes in here, they will be back in front of the city council asking for the very prescriptive and descriptive uses that we are today. Okay. There will be the full vetting of the user. There will be the full vetting of the process. We have provided I've got all kinds of photos of their facilities. Um, we've had multiple communications. But again, to, to your specific question, we've, we've been asked to provide lot two and three shall allow for the mixing, packaging, and distribution of chemicals with no significant smoke, odor, or gas emissions and have any harmful impact to the environment. Thank you. That is the narrative that was added to the PUD as requested by staff. Okay. Any other questions? Um, were there properties at in the uh, southeast uh, uh, Des Moines Ag Park that were also considered? Let's speak to that. Uh, Derek Temple, Vista Real Estate, 2486th Street, Suite 24, Urbandale. Uh, yeah, we, we looked at several sites uh, throughout the metro, uh, not just Des Moines. Uh, what we, we found that was challenging was some of those sites that we <coughs> I found in other spots was uh, larger sites that were more raw farm ground that needed developed. Uh, this this site was six acres uh, in a developed community with streets, public streets already in, kind of ready to go. Um, there was really no need for all that excess ground, so that's why we landed here. So, did did staff uh, try to assist you with any other type of land to go back to Carl's? Because I know that we have land in the Southeast Ag that has streets and roads and is flat and, and buildable. Uh, yeah, they, probably just, they, weren't of, they weren't of interest. I mean, this, this site checked a lot of the boxes as far as uh, topography, worked well for the docks, uh -huh. uh, site, accessibility is a big one with the airport, uh, visibility. Um, it's going to be a great looking building, so they'd like people to see it. Um, those were kind of the main boxes that we were looking for. But did you look at any sites down in the southeast ag portion? That, that, that area was not kind of of interest and didn't seem to be like it was going to check all the boxes that we need to check for this project. Okay. I, I've got a question for you. How do, how do you receive your stuff that you're going to mix? I mean, do you, do you get it? Is it trucked in or do you need to be by the airport? Are you going to fly it in? Yeah, currently uh, we receive tons of reefer containers from uh, South America with our product ready to go, and we just distribute it here. But in terms of raw materials, yeah, it's a very it's just, we just receive them in pallets. You know, it could be semi loads uh, for the most part. I mean, m mainly they're they're coming in containers and in, in pallets. They either like drums or uh, pallet bags for the most part. And then we just receive them in truckloads and then truck and mix them together. Yeah, and then you'll ship it out by a truckload. Uh, yeah, that's how we... And then mostly here in Iowa? Uh, we have customers anywhere from Nebraska to Ohio, all the way from North Dakota to Kansas and Missouri. So we sell in 12 different states right now. Um, and I would like to add also with the trucking and all that stuff, a standard agriculture fertilizer use is about maybe 16, 32 ounces per acre. Our products go from 2 to 4 ounces an acre, very concentrated product. And one of the things that we're doing, some of the concerns with 
contamination of underground water and things like that, our products are actually helping with those issues in terms of pesticides. Our products are uh, folks, it's basically a plant health and nutrition product. So if the disease is in there, you go and you spray a fungicide or a, a pesticide. Our products more of a, we bring in the right micronutrients at the right time and the plant is healthier and stronger. Disease pressure over here in the, in the United States, 16 times uh, lower than South America. So the plant basically protects itself against the disease and it prevents the need and the use for those other products as well. Okay. Well, my follow-up question is, I'm not, I know nothing about your business, so, mm -hmm. but we have worked real hard with a lot of folks who are in the manufacturing and they have truckloads coming and going, but they've found that uh, possibly they could lower a lot of their costs if they could get off a truck on the rail. So we have a transload facility here that is actually can help people do that. And one would think that we, to Joe's comment, you know, there's some lots down there that um, it, with, with our I, products, I was thinking maybe you, you were flying this stuff in and out, but it no, sounds but like with our products, the, the, the number of trucks that go out like every week is very, it's not very big. Like I said, one pallet, one pallet of product will cover 15,000 acres. So really low rate products, it doesn't require us to, you know, if we're sending stuff through the rail, it's just not, you know, cost effective. With, you know, one semi load of product can cover a lot of acres. So the, the amount of trucks that we're sending out, that we're receiving product, and now we're shipping product every week is very, very limited. If you compare it, you know, next door with some of the business there next door, we're gonna have very, very small amount of product going in and out compared to them because of our low rates, because of our very concentrated products. It, it does prompt me to one more question. Yep, go ahead. If I don't, we have, the, the building itself is, looks like a very attractive building. Yes. And being that you're from South America, are you going to have people from other countries flying in and out? Is that one of the reasons why you would like to be near the airport? Yes, absolutely. So uh, our, our company, our, our headquarters down in Brazil, in the south of Brazil, they actually ride by the airport as well. Uh, I know the, the owner really likes, you know, when people are coming in, and he's actually making the move here to Iowa as well. Uh, when people are coming in, you know, they can, they can see the company. Like I said, we have those events every year. Farm Progress Show, Iowa Expo, and many different other ag events. And we want to bring, you know, uh, before COVID, we were bringing hundreds of people every year from, you know, uh, Brazil, Argentina, Paraguay, Bolivia, Ukraine, all these different countries to our facilities. Not only, you know, employees, customers, many different people. But like I said earlier, we just want that location to be kind of our, you know, business card and to be spray tech's center of operation for all the other countries that we're in as well. Not in terms of manufacturing, but in terms of a uh, admin headquarters facility. The, just, just a follow-up question because I, I've kind of heard um maybe a different scenario to that that if you weren't approved for this site that you would take this building and move it to grimes and to my knowledge i don't believe grimes has an airport there that uh i don't that that, that that's that's what i've heard just okay. recently and so i i guess if that's if that's untrue then um then i apologize but that that is yeah that that was one of the one we of the things that if this was denied tonight that you wouldn't build in the city of Des Moines. We haven't had any. I personally, I, I'm coordinating Spray Tech. I'm representing Spray Tech in this whole project. Okay. I haven't had any conversations with anyone from the city of Grimes. About That's this, good to hear. About this project. Yeah. And like I said, Des Moines is where we want to be. We've been in Urbandale for eight years. But, you know, we, we want to be in the city of Des Moines. We looked at other places. And like I said, I've been leading this project, obviously, with the help of many other people in our organization as well. But I haven't had any conversations with anyone in the city of Grimes okay. and other cities. Earlier on, we were approached by other cities. You know, we were talking about expanding and manufacturing. But since we started the process, what, last year, many months ago, we've only been talking and interested with the city of Des Moines. And we hope we can make that happen. Okay. You said you were leading this project? For, in terms of first spray tech, yes. Okay. I, I was just wondering, like, um, in the real estate division, if you guys had had any conversations regarding Joe's question. Going to Grimes, it, it, there wasn't any real estate conversations like that. I mean, I mean, when they initially started looking, I mean, we kind of right, looked okay. at the whole scope of things, and this, we, like, we had a, we had a checklist of things that we were kind of looking for and 
kind of settled on three, four sites, and, and then this is where we kind of focused our attention once we, uh, once we got down to it. Okay, thank I you. Also, I should also add, sorry, any properties that we looked at in the past or anything, Derek and I, we work, you know, quite often together, so okay. he definitely would have, wouldn't have done anything with our blessing, so this is, like I said, City of Des Moines is where we want to be, and we hope we can make that happen. Thank you for clarifying. Thank you. Any other thoughts or questions? I don't have questions, but I'm, I'm happy to share my thoughts on this. Okay. Um, Does Mike Ludwig want to say something? It, He's well, stand. only if we have questions. For oh, Mike. okay. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So this would be the first industrial fertilizer use in the city of Des Moines. Uh, this is not a use that we have considered before or that, that is currently zo zoned in the city of Des Moines. Uh, I mean, I think as some of the speakers noted, I think there are broader questions about fertilizer plants. I don't think we need to, to reach that here. I think the question in front of us can, can just address the, um, the land use and, and the appropriateness here. And I have concerns, uh, and, and I appreciate the work that staff put in and the efforts um, from the folks of Spray Tech to be responsive. I think this fundamentally changes the nature of the airport business park. Uh, and I do know that there are others in that business park who have concerns with a fertilizer plant being a neighbor. Uh, I have general concerns. Um, I understand that this is a PUD, but I also saw the way that this was brought to us without any uh, any exceptions to address uh, address odor issues or to address uh, issues related to potentially hazardous materials. Now, this particular fertilizer plant does not, uh, from my understanding or the representations made, uh, doesn't carry that. But it is very easy for this process to change, and it's a lot easier to change once you have an industrial fertilizer use here. Uh, and and a and a request to just change from one fertilizer use to another. So I'm not comfortable moving forward uh, with this project in this location. Uh, it, I think a project like this would would be better if we are going to go forward with with it at all would be better in uh, with in our ag industrial park. Uh, and that, that's a conversation that we can have if there is interest in the future. Uh, but with that, I'm going to move to deny this amendment. Second. Any, uh, do we get any discussion? Yeah. Sure, go ahead. Before we vote? Go ahead. I, I guess I, I'm a little surprised that that we're moving to deny this so quickly. I mean, it is said that there's no hazardous materials, there's no odor, there's no damage to the environment. And I, I strongly, I've always said this, you know, we can raise your taxes or we can raise revenues. And here's somebody who wants to build, I'm assuming a multi-million dollar building that will bring employees, that, that will bring revenue into our city, and we're so quick to just say, nope, not in our city, we don't, we don't want you here. And I find that disappointing. I find it disappointing that we, that we continue to push people out of our city that are bringing in revenues. I mean, Plan and zoning approved it. City staff has approved it. I mean, city staff has said it's, it's, it's good for our city to have these folks here. I, I'm, just, I'm just continue to be dismayed that we, that, that we want to raise taxes, but we don't want to raise revenues. So, uh, Mayor, if I may, um, Linda, I appreciate the comments. and. and what I what I heard from Josh, and I would say that I I, I agree with with uh, with Councilman Mandelbaum is 
he doesn't think that it's a, a good area by the airport and the airport park to put this, but as we've uh, specifically this type of use, even though this use hasn't been in our city, we've suggested when we sat down that we would a, a good spot and close to the airport would be in the southeast ag portion um, where, where that would be. We did get uh, emails from other businesses in the airport park today saying that they were not in favor of, of that being there. Um, and so I would, I would support Councilman Mandelbaum's motion that, uh, but I would also be happy to work with them. And I think I've made it very clear to you guys, but I think that they have other plans and to say that it's just about the airport is, is incorrect and they will be moving the site somewhere other than Des Moines because of this. And to me, that, that really frustrates me because we're offering up another site that we, could, we can work with them and their reasoning was it needs to be by the airport, but now when they pick their building up and they move it 30 miles away from the airport, that's not the reason that they wanna build it. And so I think we all need to open our eyes and, 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 and realize what's happening here and and I won't I won't support that nor will I be leveraged uh, by anyone like that uh, but I'm happy to work with them and be able to, to to figure out somewhat of a package that they would be able to relocate in a spot where it would be much better than near the airport Tony I just want to go along with what uh, Councilman Gatto and Mandelbaum said great project would love to see it in Des Moines but not in that spot I think it's, we're redeveloping that whole ag area down on the southeast side for, I believe, items or companies like this. I think they offer a unique opportunity if they do use less. You know, some of the things we've talked about, less fertilizer for the crops and everything, it would be great. But I think it's more suited for that area. We're building a road right through uh, the southeast connector to enhance the area. It'd be, it's convenient for the airport, it's convenient for traffic to interstates. So for me, I, to Councilman Gatto's point, I think there are better areas suited for, and exactly this type of item is what we were wanting in the Southeast Ag. Because we have heard today from other people in the airport industrial area that I, you know, I don't know how much notice they've got, but we're starting to hear from them now that they have concerns. I wonder how come they didn't attend the neighborhood meeting. Well, be, uh, I think a lot of times you get, you know, it's a corporation. They get a flyer or they get the mailing, and I don't know if they understand exactly what was being asked of them. So I would be supporting Councilman Mandelbaum. Okay, any other comments? Honor the vote six to deny one no. The motion carries. Takes us to item 61. <clears throat> item 61 is on a request from the Eastgate Plaza LLC for approval of a proposed seventh amendment to the Eastgate Plaza PUD conceptual plan on property located in the vicinity of 1534 East Euclid Avenue to allow a 1.28 acre interior portion of the property to be developed with a 7,145 square feet uh, medical office building. Uh, we'll ask uh, first if there's uh, parties in interest, uh, the applicant, or anyone within 250 feet. Mayor, thank you for your time. Uh, Sid Biddle with Galloway. I am the uh, part of the engineering consultant team that is tasked with this project from Vita, um, who is a kidney care and medical consultant that will be uh, developing this property. Um, I just wanted to thank the staff for their time in the review of this project and let you guys know that I'm here for any questions should they arise. Anybody have questions or comments? Yep. Let's ask uh, now anyone else 
party of interest within that 250 feet. Seeing none, let's open it up and see if there's anyone from the general public who would like to make germane comments regarding this Eastgate Plaza project. I see one over here. My name is Jolene Prescott. I live at 3013 Third Street in Des Moines. And I live up in Highland Park. And I'm so glad that they're starting to have development of this Eastgate Plaza. It has sat as a blank eyesore for the longest time. And now we have a nice quick trip there. We have another clinic. And I'm so glad that they're doing something with it. Okay. Anyone else? Seeing none. With seeing none, I'll move item 61. I'll second it. Been moved and seconded. Your Honor, that's seven yes. Motion carries. Item 62 on the Des Moines levy alterations, phase C to reject all bids on the Des Moines levy alterations, phase C, and to close the hearing on the plan specifications, form of contract documents, and the engineer's estimate, Council Communication number 22-092. I'll move item 62, Your Honor. I'll second it. It's been moved and seconded. Josh? Your Honor, that's seven yes. Motion carries. Note it's 559, and that ends the hearings, takes us back to consent, and to item 47. Item 47 is a sponsorship of an application for financial assistance to the Iowa Economic Development Authority, IEDA, under the High Quality Jobs Program for Spray Tech Fertilizers, LLC. Council Communication Number 22-078, Mr. Mandelbaum. Uh, seeing as we just took action on, on this item, uh, I would move to continue this particular item until such a time if they come back with a different location in the Ag Industrial Corridor. Um, otherwise, if if no such application comes back, to continue indefinitely, or we'll just move to continue. And I'll second it. Yes. Just if we're back in anger to come back at the time that it's redone, that might be a better. But that need to come back to be canceled. <laughs> well, it's, it's not a hearing item, so um, it could just be for the city manager to bring it back when there's a, a okay. thing on our site. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I'll, I'll amend that to make a motion to refer to the city manager to bring back uh, at such time if they have a, another site in, the, uh, in Des Moines at the Ag Industrial Park. All right, and that's seconded, correct? Yes. All right. Your Honor, that's seven yes. Motion carries. All right, takes us to item 52. Item 52 is purchases from the following. A is Elliott Equipment Company. Gene Elliott's the president for replacement vehicle for use in the Department of Public Works. Per, per source well contract, $83,455. That's council communication number 22-097. Um, Indira, did you want me to, are you gonna go through all of them? Um, 
No, I'm not going to go through all of them. I'm going to talk about um, B, C, and D. So if we want to go ahead and I can move okay. to approve A, and then we can talk about the rest of them. All right. So item B is uh, LDV Custom Specialty Vehicles. Uh, Kurt Petrie is president uh, for the replacement vehicle for the use of the public safety per HGAC by contract, $209,153, Council Communication Number 22-098. C is uh, Stivers Ford. Uh, Scott Polite is the general manager for um, 11 replacement vehicles for the use of public safety per the State of Iowa DAS contract, $356,758.50. Are those the two that you wanted to do? And D. And D. Uh, D is um, Keltec Inc., a division of Racer Holdings Inc. Uh, Michael Jensen is president and CEO for emergency vehicle equipment for the state of Iowa DAS contract, $113,879.61. Again, council communication number 22-094. Indira. Um, I wanted to pull, I mean, do you want me to make a motion to pass A first before we yeah, talk about it? Yeah, if you'd it? like to. Okay, yeah, right. I move for, to pass, or approve 52A. Okay. Second. All right, been moved and seconded to pass item 57A. 52A. 52A. I mean 52A, I'm sorry. Yeah. Josh. You're honored that seven yes, motion carried. All right, let's move on to B. Okay, um, I can talk about B, C, and D all together. Um, this is spending, B specifically is spending um, $200,000 on a custom uh, specialty vehicle, essentially a mobile, a mobile command unit. It's gonna be like an RV style vehicle um, used for the bomb squad is the information that we got um, for like on-site communications. Uh, this isn't something that I think we should be spending on. Information that we got as well said that we have three additional mobile command vehicles that operate similarly but for different teams and their needs. Um, it seems like Metro Star Crime Scene Investigation and Traffic Investigators all have one of these. I don't know that we need a fourth one just for a specific use, um, you know, that isn't going to be in use all the time. Um, so it would be mostly sitting around when we have three others that are also not going to be in use all the time. Um, but additionally, I just don't think that it's a responsible purchase. Um, I don't think it's necessary. Um, we've seen vehicles like these um, posted up outside council meetings. We've seen vehicles like these posted up outside of protests. And so we know how they're used against the public. So I can't approve of spending on this. Um, on C and D, the uh, new police vehicles. And then on D, the, um, the uh, excuse me, equipment for police vehicles. Um, I also don't approve of these purchases. I think that we have, uh, the, the Des Moines police fleet is already too big. I think we should be focusing on reducing that. Um, and so I would not approve the purchase of additional vehicles. Um, I think we need to relook at this and that's a conversation I'm willing to continue having. I'm not gonna make a motion because nobody's gonna second it. I'll move uh, 52 B, C, and D. Oh, sorry, I'll one more thing. It. I had a public comment that I wanted to read, um, unless you guys wanted to open it to public comment. Go ahead. Any interest in opening to public comment? No. Okay, great. Um, so I, I got a comment from a constituent. This line item includes hundreds of thousands of dollars for police vehicles. It doesn't require bids, and it gives no justification for the need for new vehicles, nor does it shed light on why they chose the vendor they did. The public should have the right to weigh in, especially when these same types of vehicles were used to brutalize us during the 2020 protests. There should also be a transparent process for selecting vendors and the chance for diverse businesses to provide these vehicles if DMPD can prove they actually need them. All right. Connie seconded. Okay. Got a motion and a second. Your Honor, who seconded it? Connie. I did. Okay, Connie. thank you. Here, put down on my. Your Honor, that's six yes, one no. Motion My carries. Screen always broken. My screen's sure. always broken. All right, let's see. 
All right. That takes us now on ordinance first consideration item 63. This is amending chapter 114 of the municipal code regarding traffic regulation changes as follows. A is the code modification to modify parking restrictions on East Douglas Avenue from East 42nd Street to Northeast 56th Street due to the East Douglas Avenue reconstruction project. Council communication number 22-068. See none, I would move item 63. And I'll A. second it. 63 and 63A. Very good. Then moved and seconded. Your Honor, that's seven yes. Motion carries. Thank you, Your Honor. All right. This evening we've got a number of speakers and for those persons uh, uh, wishing to speak this evening under the public speaking item on the agenda, we will only call on those who have registered to speak. All speakers must comply with the rules regarding their names and address or they will not be recognized to speak. Each of the nine speakers this evening will receive up to two minutes to make their comments. Please keep your own time because at the end of the two minutes the clerk will announce time and the speaker's mic will be closed and we will move immediately to the next speaker. We want to hear from all of uh, the residents who've registered and we encourage the residents to be respectful of others' viewpoints that may be different from their own. While you may disagree uh, with someone's viewpoint, I want to remind everyone that the council's rules provide that any comments that are slanderous will result in the speaker being barred from further comment. As a presiding officer, I will determine uh, whether the comments are slanderous or not Fair warning, arguing with the presiding officer about the determinations on this matter are not permitted and doing so will be considered disruptive and result in the speaker being barred from further comments and being required to leave. Um, let's go ahead and move on our communications from our citizens. Our first speaker this evening is Natalie Harwin. My name is Natalie Harwood. I live in Ward 1. Um, this June, the franchise agreement between Mid-American Energy and the City of Des Moines is set to expire. I want to urge the Council to let this agreement expire. We can use it as leverage to improve the lives of our citizens. Letting the agreement expire doesn't halt energy to our community. Minneapolis has done just this to no ill effect. What it does allow is for more public control over the utility. Mid-American has expressed the intention to burn coal until 2049, despite the fact that every ounce of energy they got from coal in 2021 was excess. One third of what they generated in 2021 was sold out of state. They are Iowa's largest carbon polluter by far. We can tell them we won't sign a new agreement unless they agree to stop building coal, um, burning coal. From March to November 2020, Mid-American shut off utilities on 8,210 Iowan households. During that same period, a ban on utility disconnections could have reduced COVID-related deaths by nearly 15%. If we allow the agreement to expire, we could have the leverage that we need to, to reduce the ability for them to shut off our citizens' utilities. We can tell them they have to provide energy assistance to our citizens. We can also require they contribute to energy efficiency improvements in our community. It doesn't hurt the city to let it expire. We are Mid-American's biggest customer and we have leverage. Their stockholders and lenders would not like to see this expire. Besides the contribu contributions of the executives of Berkshire Hathaway to Frank County, most of you have donors who would be interested in this reclimate action. It's a win-win for you as well as for our community. I'm urging you to let the agreement expire and for us to demand more from our people from Mid-American Energy. Adam Callanan. Hello, my name is Adam Callanan. I use he, him pronouns. I live in Word 350309. Um, I want to talk about virtual meetings with the with dropping the mask mandate in public buildings. We need virtual hybrid meetings now. We know and the city knows that many people are unable to attend these meetings for health reasons or other reasons. And without a mask mandate, that just gets worse. These meetings are not public because they're explicitly not open to everyone. That needs to change. We need virtual or hybrid meetings now. The city's had far enough time to to develop that. Uh, also wanted to open up for uh, folks who want to build a better Des Moines outside of our current city council, People's Town Hall is having a virtual call mutual aid 101 on Wednesday, March 9th at 7 p.m. Register at bit.ly slash all caps NDMMAXPTH. 
Um, I wanted to talk a bit about the city, uh, trigger warning for police violence, 2020 protests, prisons and jails. Uh, we're still learning details of, <coughs> me, of what happened and with more information coming out, a lot of people that were traumatized by the city are going to be re-traumatized or already have. <coughs> The city hasn't released the investigations into DMPD abuse that the city committed to. Instead, the city has, raked, has to be raked through the coals to do anything on behalf of the people they spent summer 2020 attacking. We know of over 50 protest arrest cases that were either had their charges dropped or the city lost in trial. So we know that the city responded to protests with violence and caging people for speaking up and protesting, not violating laws or whatever the pretext was. Uh, beyond that, this implicates the city, DMPD, county sheriffs, and Polk County attorney. Um, all using jail and prisons to attack speech that they don't like, they're uncomfortable with, uh, for political reasons. I was especially bad jail and prison conditions, especially in terms of mental health. The city uses these inhumane conditions willingly, doesn't really consider the effects of them. Um, these prisons also use slave labor through prisoners, and these prisons are especially dangerous places for black people, indigenous people, people of color, women, trans people, um, pretty much any marginalized group of people are, are more at risk in these prisons. So the city needs to really think about all that happens when they put people in prison unjustly. Kerry Gosnell. My name is Kerry Gosnell. I live in Ward 3, 50312. My name pronouns are she, her, hers. On February 23, 23rd, I was uh, CCI Racial Justice Team, Just Voices, and DSM Surge held a press conference where we expressed our disappointment in the city's minimal progress towards accomplishing the six-point plan to reduce racial profiling that was presented to you in November of 2018. At that press conference, we made three demands. We demand a third-party investigation of the DMPD by the Polk County Attorney's Office. We demand an, an independent community review board, and we demand that Chief Dana Wingert be fired. Chief Wingert responded in a news report by saying he has been and will continue to work with the community. I'm confused. Is that is avoiding us for six years what you call working with the community? How about refusing to participate in the marijuana task force? Which part of the community is he working with? Because it certainly isn't the part that keeps showing up here. Iowa CCI and the rest of the community have been more than patient. We've tried to work within your system, and in return, the action we get is over 1.5 million in settlements for violent or unjust policing, class action lawsuits for sexual discrimination and harassment, new video evidence of 2020 police brutality towards protesters, officers about to face discipline allowed to retire with benefits, and the police chief refusing to implement recommendations of your marijuana task force. How is this acceptable? How would any of us keep our jobs with a record like this? I appreciate and acknowledge those who have engaged in conversations, but we need leaders who act and not talk. It's taken far too long and we've gotten very little. And this community deserves a chief who wants to make us better, who will bring the community together, not avoid it, while showing off their power and authority to do so. We need a chief who will reduce violence and not escalate it. And for those listening, call your city leaders and tell them that you too demand action to make Des Moines safer James Grimm. James Grimm. Al Steinsaw. Al Steinsaw. Taylor Weber. Taylor Weber, Ward 3. I uh, appreciate all the comments uh, by, by others tonight. want to really uplift them. Um, I, I'm going to try and be quick on some of the comments because there's just so much going on uh, between tornadoes over the weekend, more snow uh, today, and just everything uh, climate-wise seeming like it's, it's changing faster and faster. I really appreciate us uh, voting down a fertilizer plant. I understand all the caveats that we talked about, but it is a step uh, in a positive direction. I would encourage us not to work with them, to just put it somewhere else in the city. Uh, I don't think that's a great option either. Um, 
but that neither here nor there, uh, echo Mid-American Energy and uh, not continuing with their agreement. We had more items on the agenda tonight, uh, doing things like putting LED light bulbs in and stuff like that. That's really uh, half measures in terms of actually addressing uh, climate change. So considering we also partner with Mid-American on so many uh, bids where we give them city money, I think it would be important uh, to make sure we're standing up for citizens as well. Uh, and then the last piece I'd really like to echo is, uh, again, the the violence that uh, DMPD continues to carry out uh, is, is known in the community and there's only gonna be more and more evidence of that coming out. Connie and Josh, I sat in rooms uh, this fall where you both said you support an independent investigation into the DMPD uh, and asking for accountability. I have not heard any action from either one of you uh, in terms of what concretely are you going to do to make that follow through. I don't know if you wanna to chat tonight, I'm available, I got some time, um, but I really would encourage you, uh, whatever your future endeavors might be, I'd hate for things and broken promises or empty gestures to be something that uh, people can use against you in the future, especially when it's something so important as uh, people's lives. Uh, and then lastly, I'd just like to end by uh, saying, Uh, and worried about what's going on in our community. I think we should take a minute to reflect on that. Harvey Harrison. Good afternoon. My name is Harvey Harrison. I live at 680 Harwood Drive in Des Moines. I'm a member of the CCI Racial Justice Team and a founder of Just Voices Iowa. After working for more than seven years to reform policing in our city, it now seems abundantly clear that the current chief of police has no real interest in creating real accountability for wrongful conduct of his officers and no interest in a serious public dialogue based upon honesty and transparency about creating a police department organized around 21st century concepts of public safety and policing. So the question directed to you is, what more do you need from us before you act decisively? The most recent disclosures about sexual harassment of female officers, the assault of Andrea Sahori and others during the 2020 protests, the filing of bogus criminal charges by police in 2020 should have been enough, as well as the amounts of money spent on settlements. Perhaps the release by uh, just voices of the video showing police captain Kirk Bagby and two other officers knocking down a young man on the streets of Des Moines and taking his cell phone will be finally enough. If what you currently know is not enough, what will it take? Is it really going to take the death of another black man to move you to decisive action? In Harry Truman's words, the buck of responsibility is supposed to stop on Dana Wingert's desk. He's utterly failed to exercise his responsibilities in this regard. That means the buck is now on your desks. It is time for you to exercise your responsibilities and fire Police Chief Dana Wingert. Cheryl Maher. Hello, Carol Maher, Ward 3, zip code 50312. Mayor, County, and City Council members. By now, you've all figured out that I'm a PETA, a real pain in the arse. But I also hope that you realize I'm willing to do the homework and research, sit through day-long meetings to understand how the city works and, put to, and how it's put together so I can present informed and reasonable points of view. Today, I would like to recognize the many city staff members, the worker bees, who have so kindly, generously, and patiently provided information on their departments, jobs, and projects. And while I recognize that I am a PETA to them as well, whenever I introduce myself, I tell them that I'm going to be their favorite pain in the arse. <clears throat> These folks are simply the best. And while only pay raises for DMPD were discussed at the budget workshop due to their contract, I urge you to consider hefty pay raises 
and maybe one-time bonuses, see ARPA funds for that, to, return, to retain these valuable city staff. In this tight labor market, retaining these folks is key, as hiring new would be expensive and loss of intellectual, excuse me, institutional knowledge would be great. So here's my list. Colby Fangman, Jeff Wiggins, who is my soul mate in biking, Chris Cool, Jason Van, J Van Essen, Bert Drost, Sonny Sengaphone, Joe Brandstatter, John Davis, Matt Webb, Sarah Thies, all 911 dispatchers, Al Setka, Peter Zemanski, and Devin Perry, and several department heads have also tolerated me, tolerated me as well. Ben Page, Steve Neighbor, a fellow Quad Cityan, Nick, Nick Shaw, Jonathan Gano, Kay Smellick, and Scott Hutchins. Oh, wait, oh, there's one, one more. One more, and finally, for the electeds that I have been able to convince to vote with an environmental first point of view, they are counting a council members. There's no need to be aggressive. Wow. Wow. Oh, wow. That's <laughs> Jolene Prescott. Her time was up. Let's let her speak. So let her speak. Let's go ahead. Her two minutes was up. Yep. My name is Jolene Prescott and I live at 3013 Third Street. And I would like a moment of silence because today a young man died at East High School and I'm being, if I can't, if you guys can't hear me, that's a violation of my First Amendment rights. We have a young man who died today and I think a while back the, the Des Moines District made a big mistake by taking police out of the high schools. And we need to reinstate those people. It's not working. Have you been in the high schools? It's my, I, someone close to me has. And it is not working. We need to have the police back in there. And I will have, I will have, and I'm gonna go speak to them too. Because it's time to put the police back in there. They need to be in there. Oh, you're the loser, honey. You 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 said that. No, it was not, not right. It was wasn't right. right. You're out of line. You need to stop it now. Uh, uh, I'll make. Oh. Hey, listen. That's ridiculous. I will make a motion. Her time was up. Her time was up. It's a double standard. No, it's not. I will make a motion to receive and file 65A through I. We have a motion. We have a motion to receive and file. Second. Second. All in favor? Say aye. aye. All right. <laughs> Item passes. We have a motion to adjourn. Can we vote?